Okay, if I can make it through this entire presentation without crying, it'll be good. But we'll see. We'll see. Um, first things first, guys, my parents are in the audience tonight. All the way here from North Carolina. Um, so thank you guys for everything you have done for me, obviously, and, you know, creating me and all that stuff. Uh, go chat with them afterward. I'm sure they have a lot of embarrassing stories about me. It is such a great honor to be able to speak here tonight for many reasons. Number one, uh, I get to give a final lesson on life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness in front of all of my favorite students. That is awesome. Uh, the second reason is because one of my great idols and someone that I learned a lot from, Randy Posh, he was... <laughs> <laughs> one of my uh, one of my great idols, Randy Posh, he actually gave a last lecture when he was dying from pancreatic cancer, and it's an absolutely amazing speech. Look for it on YouTube. It will change your life. Uh, so some of you guys may know me as the Residence Life Guy. In the case of Ellie Pham, you might know me as the Scary Bald Man. <laughs> There's Ellie in the back. Um, some of you know, may know me only as the humans versus zombies guy who likes to chase students across Cruz Plaza. Some of you may know me only as that slightly creepy guy who says hi and smiles at every single person that he sees. For those of you guys who know me well, you know that I love to speak about leadership. And I can talk for hours and hours and hours about leadership. However, I only have 25 minutes tonight, so I'm going to make it short, sweet, and to the point. Hopefully. If this was the last lecture I was ever giving my students, what would I want to tell them? Considering I am indeed leaving at the end of May, this will be my last lecture. So what do I want to talk about? Although I'm still relatively young in life, kind of, there are still a few lessons that I've learned in order to how to, how to lead my life. And I would like to share with them, I would just like to share them with you today. So I'm going to talk a little bit about leadership and a lot about life. We are all leaders in some capacity, or we will be leaders in some capacity in our future. Whether you are a leader now or later, remember to always be of the people, not above the people. You're not in an ivory tower when you're a leader. You are down there in the trenches with the people that you lead. No matter your standing in life, don't hesitate to get on their level. A boss says go, but a leader says let's go. It makes you more relatable to the people that you work with, and they will feel more comfortable and open up to you much easier. So that's why I play humans versus zombies. That's why I am always on different intramural teams all the time, because that's how I, I relate to students, and that helps them feel more comfortable and, and want to talk to me more. Um, remember that leadership is just a word, but your actions are what give it a definition. Um, leadership is not about your position, it is about your actions and your attitude. And one of the best attitudes that you can have is a positive, encouraging one. As a great friend of mine often says, always bring your own little bucket of sunshine. Um, always build up the people around you. Never tear them down. Practice forgiveness more than you practice criticism. Focus on people's strengths, and don't focus on their weaknesses. That's what leaders do. So, I want to talk about failure. As many of you guys know, I plan on hiking the 2,189 mile Appalachian Trail beginning in June. It's been a great dream of mine for many years, and I'm finally excited to have that opportunity, time, and the resources in order to be able to do this. What many of you guys don't know is that this actually is not the first time I have attempted a long-distance hike like this. 
In 2011, I flew out to Colorado in order to attempt the hike the Apple or yeah. in order to attempt the hike the 500 mile Colorado Trail. So here's me on the Colorado Trail camping. Actually, that's not me at all. I just pulled that picture from the internet. Uh, here's actually me. I was 22. I was in the middle of grad school, and I was way overconfident in my abilities. I hiked 100 miles before I got hit by a snowstorm in the middle of June, and I hightailed it the heck out of there. I ended up hitchhiking 100 miles back to Denver, Colorado, and catching the first flight home. I was woefully unprepared, and to be honest, Colorado kicked my ass. It was one of the greatest failures of my life. But do I regret it? Not at all. Do I look back on it with sadness and wish I could have done it differently? Not at all. In my failure, I have succeeded. I was able to learn from my mistakes. And I'm out there about to attempt an even bigger and better hike. Some people may ask, Josh, why are you attempting a 2,200 mile hike when you couldn't even finish a 500 mile hike? Why not start small and work your way up? But in life, you can't play it safe simply because you're afraid of failing. The way I see it, if I'm going to fail, I'm going to fail doing something awesome. I'm going to fail gloriously. I'm going to fail trying my hardest and giving it everything I got. Because every time you fail, you gain valuable experience that helps you, that makes you better and better in the long run. So my advice to you is don't play it safe. Take those risks. Step outside of your comfort zone and push those boundaries of what you thought possible. Because you know what happens when you stretch yourselves to our limits? We grow. Growth happens at our limits. That's the final picture I took on the Colorado Trail when I was hitchhiking back. So there is a quote by a guy named Bill Nicholson, and he's a soccer coach in England. And he says, it is, ba it, is better to it is better to fail aiming high than to succeed aiming low. And we of Spurs have set our sights very high. So high, in fact, that even failure will have in it an echo of glory. So there's actually me. Um, everyone has their own epic hike in life. Their own life journey upon which they are proceeding. It could be your desire to get into med school. It can be your desire to graduate with honors and get that awesome internship that you're hoping for your desire for that perfect job and that perfect family. And just like the Appalachian Trail, your own epic hike will have its ups and its downs. You'll see amazing views from the tops of so many mountains, but there will be other days when you're down in the valleys with rain pouring down on you, wondering what the heck are you doing in this situation and how the heck are you gonna get out? And you don't know if there's gonna ever be a light at the end of that tunnel. But in those dark moments, remember that those valleys, those hardships, are what make the top of those mountains so worth it. Our failures exist to make our successes that much sweeter. Those setbacks, those brick walls that pop up when you're so close to achieving your dreams, they exist for a reason. They are there to help you realize how much you really want. And when you finally achieve those dreams, you will look back on those hardships and you will realize that everything was completely worth it. Thomas Paine said, the greater the conflict, the more glorious the triumph. One of my favorite quotes of all time is by a man named Jack Kerouac. Um, for those of you who don't know, he's a writer. Um, and he spent much of his younger days hitchhiking around the United States and going on epic road trips with his friends, which I think would be really cool. Um, he wrote in his book, cleverly titled On the Road, he wrote, because the only ones for me are the mad ones, the ones who are mad to live, mad to talk, mad to be saved, desirous of everything at the same time, the ones who never yawn or say a commonplace thing, but burn, burn, burn like fabulous yellow Roman candles exploding like spiders across the stars. I love this quote because it talks about being mad with passion for life. 
So I encourage you to find something that makes you mad. Not in the angry sort of way, but in the way that makes you feel alive. Find something that sets your insides on fire with warmth and excitement. Find something that gets you all jittery and excited just thinking about it. For me, that's working with you guys in the field of student affairs. Knowing that I have the opportunity to hopefully make a difference in the lives of people every day. That's what gets me excited and ready to go to work every morning. And this can apply to everything. Find a love that's on fire. You only have one life. You can't be lukewarm with your decisions. When you find something that gets you mad with energy and enthusiasm, excitement and happiness, that's when you know that you've found your calling in life. So find something to be mad about and be mad with everything that you do. There's my family. Uh, my brother's missing from this picture, but he's in Las Vegas, he's doing well. Um, I am blessed to have absolutely fantastic parents who have taught me so many different lessons in life. Um, and I've, I've been blessed to have such great role models in my life. Um, my dad taught me something great when I was, when I was younger. So I was a bit of a rambunctious teenager. I was always getting in trouble. I was always, you know, driving around with all of my friends. And I was, I was obsessed with scary movies so, and exploring. So I would always try to trespass into random abandoned buildings with my video camera and I always try to find ghosts. So I never found any ghosts, um, but I did get into a lot of trouble, a lot. Uh, needless to say, one particular night at two o'clock in the morning, I called my dad when my car was stuck in the middle of a cemetery, in the middle of nowhere. It was stuck in the mud. And he always knew something was wrong when I would start my conversation with, Father. <laughs> and he'd go, oh God, what now? I'd explain to him my situation, and then he would always say these following words to me. He'd always say, Josh, your actions have consequences. <laughs> and it's true. And that's a lesson that I take into the workplace every single day of my life. Every single thing that we do, whether it's large or small, has some sort of positive or negative impact and some sort of positive or negative consequence. It can be something as simple as throwing a piece of paper on the ground. Someone, somewhere, eventually has to clean that up. So that's the consequence of that action. Or maybe it's reaching out and touching base with someone who you haven't talked to in a while. Or perhaps something as simple as smiling and saying hey to every person that you see when you're walking to and from work. Every single one of us has the power to make or break someone's day in some small or large fashion. So that's why I smile and say hey to everyone. Um, who knows what battles that person is facing that day? Maybe all they needed was for someone to smile and say hey to them and let them know that they matter this world. Maybe that's all they needed that day. Every single one of us has that opportunity to be a hero. Our capes are just invisible. When I was a senior in college in East Carolina, I met a student named Jay Hakimi. He moved into his residence hall late, and as a result, the hall had already formed friendships, and he was kind of left out of the loop. He had just broken up with his girlfriend, he was in a completely new place, and he had no friends. And as a result, he had a panic attack. So I was the RA on duty there, and I responded to that situation. And I made sure that for weeks afterward, any time I was going to lunch somewhere, I would reach out to Jay, and I'd say, hey, come join me. Or every time I was playing Frisbee, I'd say, hey, you know, Jay, come join me. Um, he never talked for like the first couple of weeks, but eventually he started getting more comfortable and as a result, he got acclimated to the college atmosphere, and he made a lot of friends. In October of that year, he sent me a Facebook message, and it said, Josh, this is well overdue, but I wanted to thank you for everything you have ever done for me. Ever since that first night, you've made this transition a lot easier on me. I had just broken up with the only girl I've ever loved in my entire life, and I've been going through hell since. 
You don't understand the impact that you have made in my life since you have been here. When I read those words, I knew without a doubt that that was the defining moment when I wanted to go into the field of student affairs to help students like Jay Hakimi every single day of my life and help them transition into the college atmosphere. So there's a great leadership talk. Woo, there's a great leadership talk by a man named Drew Dudley. He talks about celebrating leadership as the everyday act of improving each other's lives. I know I've shown this video to a lot of you guys already, and some of you have seen it like 15 different times. But we're going to watch it one more time.
where someone said something or did something that you feel fundamentally made your life better. All right. How many of you have told that person they did it? See, why not? We celebrate birthdays where all you have to do is not die for 365 days. <laughs> and then we have people who make our lives better walk around without knowing. And every single one of you, every single one of you has been the catalyst for lollipop one. You have made someone's life better by something that you said or that you did. And if you think you have it, think about all the hands that didn't go back up when I asked that question. You're just one of the people who hasn't been told. But it is so scary to think of ourselves as that powerful. It can be frightening to think that we can matter that much to other people. Because as long as we make leadership something bigger than us, as long as we keep leadership something beyond us, as long as we make it about changing the world, we give ourselves an excuse not to expect it every day from ourselves and from each other. Marianne Williamson said that our greatest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our greatest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light and not our darkness that frightens us. And my call to action today is that we need to get over that. We need to get over our fear of how extraordinarily powerful we can be in each other's lives. We need to get over it so we can move beyond it. And our little brothers and our little sisters, and one day our kids, our kids right now can watch and start to value the impact we can have on each other's lives more than money and power and titles and influence. We need to redefine leadership as being about lollipop moments. How many of them we create, how many of them we acknowledge, how many of them we pay forward, and how many of them we say thank you for. Because we make leadership about changing the world, and there is no world. There's only six billion understandings of it, and if you change one person's understanding of it, one person's understanding of what they're capable of, one person's understanding of how much people care about them, one person's understanding of how powerful an agent for change they can be in this world, you change the whole thing. And if we can change, understand leadership like that, I think we can redefine leadership like that, I think we can change everything. And it's a simple idea, but I don't think it's a small one. And I want to thank you all so much for letting me share with you. Drew talked about lollipop moments, about how small and insignificant, about how small and seemingly insignificant things can fundamentally change people's lives. Our actions have consequences. We make such a great difference in the lives of the people around us, and sometimes we don't even realize it. Every single one of us can be the catalyst for a lollipop moment, and every single one of us has had someone change our lives without them even realizing it. But in today's busy world, we often forget to tell those people how much we appreciate them. So my call to action to you, for you guys today is to remember to tell those people in your life how much you appreciate them before it's too late. Call your parents. Call your best friends. Tell people that they matter and they make a difference in your lives. If you look underneath your seats, you will find that I snuck in here earlier and I taped a lollipop underneath every single one of your seats. I want each of you to know that you guys have made an absolutely amazing impact on my life. For all those you, for all those in the back, I have, I have more lollipops for y'all, by the way. My experience here at Mercer would not have been possible without such fantastic students. And I just want you guys to know that y'all have changed my life. I will never forget you guys. Um, so you can eat that lollipop or you can pass that lollipop on. Or you, you can hand that lollipop. Forrest has already eaten it. <laughs> no worries, I got more. Um, I encourage you. I do have more lollipops. Um, you can pass that lollipop on to someone else who has made a difference in your life, and you can tell them how much, you've made, how much they've made a difference. You will definitely make their day. 
you might just change their life. So I'm going to close, because I know I'm at like 22 minutes right now, I'm probably at like 24. Uh, so we can, yeah, we can. So earlier, we talked about the fact that everyone has their own great hike in life. Their own epic journey that they are traveling on. And everyone hopes to eventually stand on top of those mountains at the end of their journey and realize that all their dreams have come true. The truth is, when you take risks, when you believe in yourself, when you put others before yourself, when you focus on the positives in life, and when you are mad with passion about the things that you love in your life, you won't only stand on top of mountains, you will move mountains. And you will accomplish everything that you could ever dream of and more. In all aspects of your life, never accept mediocre. I urge you to push the limits of who you are, love yourself completely and utterly, and never ever allow yourself to settle for anything less than the absolutely extraordinary. Those are my final lessons for you. Thank you and good night.